Joined now by Giris Junez, uh, CTO of the Data Center Software Division and GM of Big Data Software and Services at Intel. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. Much of the discussion around big data has revolved around software, mm -hmm. but where does hardware, what role is it going to play in here? Um, you know, Hadoop is an interesting framework. It involves a combination of storage, storage network and compute. And um, as we started working on Hadoop about two and a half, three years ago, we found there were so many different ways we could optimize the overall infrastructure to perform better uh, in a particular cluster mm -hmm. by optimizing at those layers. So to give you a few examples, you know, Intel provides SSD uh, solid state drives. Now, to use SSD effectively in a Hadoop environment, you need to do some software level caching. So we have that unique knowledge to bring the caching element with SSD to optimize the platform. Another example that you may have heard, we talked about our project Rhino. A small part of that is using AES and I instruction set that are there in every Xeon processor to be able to encrypt the HDFS and HBase data. And you know we have a very clear view on how that optimization can be delivered. So it was far easier for us to deliver that optimization into the open source than it would be for somebody else. So you know there are, and if you look down the road and we see hardware roadmaps a couple of years down the road, what they're going to be, there's a fundamental shift in data center coming, where you stop thinking of the data center unit as a server and you start to think of as a rack or as a you know even a larger environment, and in that. How do you change the Hadoop infrastructure or evolve it so it uses that framework more effectively becomes uh, something that Intel does very well and that's why our role in providing a distribution and then supporting it and putting the improvements into the open source to drive that forward. You mentioned framework. I mean, mm -hmm. where is the framework for big data heading? That's, you know, uh, Part of our reason to become a participant in this ecosystem as opposed to a pure technology enabler mm -hmm. is that there is uh, the, the framework itself need to expand to address different kinds of needs being asked from it, right? So it started off with MapReduce Paradigm. Uh, you're hearing a lot about SQL. Mm -hmm. We hear a lot about text search. You also hear then a layer above it, which is how to pull all these different kind of data science, uh, OLTP, the transaction querying, and analytics querying together in a way that different audiences can use it. Mm -hmm. And so our view is this framework needs to evolve so Hadoop becomes the common substrate on which data, data scientists, the online transaction querying, different kind of processing can happen, and not all of it will happen within Hadoop. Some of it will happen outside, and you know we talked about our collaboration with SAP at the launch event, that's an example of how the real-time querying happens outside of the framework, but it integrates nicely. So if you want to do an OLAP query that uses a lot of data that is not something that will fit in memory, you could use Hadoop and, HANA and SAP HANA together mm -hmm. to respond to those kind of queries. What are dark data and new data? I've heard those phrases recently. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty fascinating, you know. Uh, we are, uh, we work uh, at Intel, we work very closely with many of the ecosystem partners that are providing capability of generating new data, data that didn't exist just a year ago or even six months ago. To give you an example, there is a pilot that's running in Texas where they're co collecting smart meter information from houses and doing analysis on that data so that they could point exactly to what equipment in a house might be sucking too much power and maybe ready for replacement because yeah. it's you know there's a more efficient way to do it. So that's an example of new data, right? Automobiles are generating, they have multiple uh, cores now, processing cores, and they are throwing tremendous amount of data as they move around in traffic. And how do you analyze it to, to deliver better, da better data to the automobile manufacturer so they can design better machines down the road? So those are examples of new data. I mean, dark data is data that actually existed, but because it was either too large or stored in places it couldn't be accessed, it was not being used. So an example of that I would just point to is, uh, you know, all of the construction data of all the buildings in New York, for example, this is a customer pilot we worked with, that they have data on every every knob, every window that is in Manhattan buildings. Mm -hmm. So now, with using Hadoop framework, we with the, uh, working with them, we have designed an application where they could go to an architect who has the job of setting up a new building in Manhattan and say, "Well, your building is facing southeast. The wind shear is so much. 
this is the kind of sunlight you, go, you want to have inside. Here are the specification of different piece parts you can put right. inside the building. That's using dark data more effectively to solve tomorrow's problem. Interesting. What are the uh, security and compliance considerations that come along with dark and new data? So, you know, um, again, a uh, lot of Hadoop ecosystem kind of evolved from uh, environments where uh, speed and performance uh, was important, but also being able to find meaningful data out of these users, uh, information, Facebook, Yahoo, uh, web environments was important. But as, as Hadoop moves from that uh, framework into getting into places like healthcare or government or financial services, the security elements become quite critical. Compliance becomes important. So, you know, who has access to, who accessed this particular data last time? If you look at HIPAA compliance or PCI DSS compliance, you have to be able to predictably decipher and tell who accessed certain amount of data. You have to be able to encrypt individual piece parts of data. You have to be able to provide access control so you can control in a shared environment like in a cloud service provider that if I have two competing vendors whose data I'm co-hosting in my framework, right. they're not able to look at each of those data. Right. That's an example of security need coming up as we move into more enterprise-ready environments and out of pure web environments. Interesting, well thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, thanks for having me.